Procedural textures might seem like a difficult subject to tackle. However, it's really not that hard. And once you get the hang of it, it will allow you to create materials which are easy to apply to almost any object in your scene. So in today's video, we'll be creating this procedural tile shader uh, with all of these controls included, which will allow you to do the following. We can change the main color of our tiles like so. We can change the secondary color to any color we want. We can change the mortar color. We can change the tile scale. For example, if you want more mosaic style tiles, we can make them smaller. We can change the mortar size, giving us more mortar make it white so you can actually tell it's there. We can change the tile width to get more horizontal tiles or the height to even it out or even get vertical aligned tiles. We can change the displacement um, if we want more depth. So something like a 0.05 could also work. I'm using 0.02 for now. Uh, we can change the bump strength, which is the amount of bump uh, we get from the normals. Leave it at 0.01 for now. And we can change the overall roughness of our model by increasing this to a wider value, white being completely rough, black being the original slightly rough and also slightly reflective texture. All right, so if we go into shading, you can tell this is our node group, which allows us to tweak all of these settings and it will give us this result. Now, by clicking on this icon over here, we can see our entire node network. And at first glance, it might seem like a very complicated mess of nodes, but I can ensure you it's really not that difficult. Let's go ahead and recreate this material for ourselves. So I'm going to delete this material here and add in a new one, which I'm going to call something like procedural tile shader. So we have this principal BSDF and this material output. I'm just going to move this down over here and I'm going to add in a displacement node first of all and plug that in there. Now I want to point out that this UV sphere I've got over here has the subdivision surface with adaptive subdivision. This is a feature that's only available within the experimental branch of cycles. So I'm in cycles experimental branch and this will allow you to enable adaptive subdivision. And if I do this and for example, um, I go over here and make sure that it's actually using the displacement. So in the settings for our material in surface, I'm going to enable displacement and bump. And as you can tell now, if I change the skill, something is actually happening to our models placement. So that's something that you want. That's something that will make uh, it look way more realistic. Let's start off by adding in a brick texture and let's take that and take our factor here and plug that into the height for our displacement. Now this will generate this um, and that's looking very, very ugly. So let's take down our displacement skill. And with the brick texture selected, I'm going to hit control T, which will give us the mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Now this is a node wrangler feature. So make sure you go into preferences into add ons and you have the node wrangler add on enabled. So this actually works for you too. Now I'm going to change this to UV here. Uh, I'm just going to change this to a color because I like to get some contrast uh, in there as well. So just copy these over this one a little darker. And let's take this um, brick texture here and plug that into the base color as well. As you can tell, um, it sort of is working. Uh, however, it's not entirely correct just yet. Um, and that's because the mortar is now going outward and the bricks are going inward. And we can easily change that by just adding in a invert node and plugging it in here. And that should cover that. Now for our brick texture, the important thing we need to do for now is we need to take this mortar smooth and just set it to one. And this will create these nice uh, fading out tiles instead of this which is completely hard edged like a brick would be um, i'm going to set it all the way to one giving us these nice smooth tiles finally for the displacement we are going to use a mix rgb node take this into the one now if i control shift click on this we get the output of our nodes here and as you can tell um, the output for our color is just the black for the mortar but also the different colors here these one and two colors giving us variations in uh, the tint here. And that's a good thing because we can use that to differentiate the depth of our tiles. So I'm going to re-enable this and I'm going to take the brick texture color and I'm going to put it in the mix node as well. Now I'm going to set it to add. Let's see what happens. So this is the completely differentiated texture, I believe. And this is the completely normal texture. I'm going to set it to something like a point to five for starters. And let's see if that works. I think it needs a little bit more. So I'm going to set it to 0.5. Now I want to add in another mix RGB node. So I'll just take this one and hit shift D to duplicate. And what I want to do uh, effectively is create, first of all, a control to change the mortar because uh, I will show you real quick if I remove this and I change the mortar 
for example to a white color um, this will ruin our depth and that's because the white now becomes less displaced in a uh, in a sense and i want the black to be in there to get these nice ridges so i need a different way to change the color there so let's add in a mix rgb node and set this all the way to white now if i set this to one our texture will be completely white like i said if we preview this we also have the factor output now the factor output is just a black and white mask of the brick texture so we can use that to tell our base color which should be which so shift click on this one uh, if i now take the factor here and i plug it in here we can simply generate a mask telling our texture where it should be white and where it should be this teal color i do want some control over this so i'm going to add in a color ramp here and i'm going to set it to constant and now i'm just going to tweak this until i'm happy with where the edges are and i think this is fine so i'm going to leave it as so, so now we have some control over this and our base color is looking fine. We also get the differentiation here, but if I just copy this color over here, we get no differentiation. I just like to get some diversity in there because these are man-made products and they are not identical in any way. Now for the roughness, we have a color ramp, obviously, as always, and a noise texture. Now a quick tip to actually get some space for your nodes. Um, so you get all of these lines connecting them. And if you want to add in some extra room, you can shift and right click and drag over a line with the Node Wrangler add-on that is to get more control over the placement of your connectors. All right, so color ramp into the roughness, factor into factor, and let's set our scale to something like 15, detail to something like 10, and our roughness to something like 0.7 or so. And now let's just crank up these values until we get some nice reflections going in there. And I'm just gonna change these colors. So I want this to be almost black, but not completely black. And I want the white color to not be white, but just very, very, very light gray. All right, so that's good. However, this also affected our mortar and we don't want that. So again, we will use a mix node and in this case white again because white in this case means non-reflective and our mortar doesn't need to be reflective and we can actually take this same color ramp that we have over here and we can take the color output and plug that into the factor as well and now we should get completely rough mortar but also some nice detail on the roughness of our tiles here and we can actually preview this by control shift clicking here and see what's going on and as you can tell this is working as intended so i'm just gonna crank these in together a bit more a bit more contrast in there and there you go now the final shader part is the bump uh, normal detail that is and plug this into the normal socket of the principled bsdf duplicate both of these for now and i'm gonna plug the color into the height here now this will generate i don't know what it is but uh not what we want at least so i'm gonna reset the color ramp and i'm gonna remove all the detail and all the roughness and set the scale to something like 100 okay so now we get a lot of bump maybe even a 150 if i now take the strength and set it to 0.01 we get this very nice enamel look to our tiles so for example if i now mute this uh, and it's gone this is how it looks it's very reflective uh, also very crisp and if i re-enable it with m uh, we get this distortion and i think it really really adds to the realism of our tiles however again also working on the mortar so let's take another mix node here take our color ramp and plug that into the factor again and in this case i want to make sure it's set to black which basically means no bump all right so that's the bump all done and that means we got our procedural shader finished and now we want to add a control group or a node group and to do that we just select all of our nodes and then hit ctrl g to put them in a group now if we hit n over here we get this window over here we have the group tab and we have the node tab so i'm just going to name this like the tile group or something doesn't really matter give it a name that works for you and in here we have the group now we have this group input node here and we can use that to generate things which we can affect over here. So I want to affect the main color, the secondary color, uh, not this mortar color because that will uh, ruin our displacement, but I want this for the mortar color. I want the skill, mortar size, brick width, row height. Let's take the strength of our normal, skill of our displacement. And finally, I want some control over the roughness and we can do that by adding in another simple mix node. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one Set it to screen and set this to black and screen basically makes the black invisible so now there's no affecting the roughness until you make the color lighter so it gives full control over that uh, affecting this texture that we generated with the noise 
So I'm going to take this color and plug it in here. And finally, for these noise textures, let's make sure they use the UV texture coordinate system as well. Now we have the group input here and we have all of these, uh, but the names are not very convenient for us. So we can just go over here, enlarge this and just change some of these. So I'm going to name this to main color. Let's rename this to secondary color, mortar color, tile skill, mortar size is fine, tile width, tile height, normal strength, displacement, and finally roughness. So now if I click here, I exit the group, we get this nice node group again. And over here we have our texture with full control again over everything. So uh, change the skill, change the mortar size, change the width of the tiles to whatever you want, change the colors, change the normal strength. You want more bump in there, change the displacement and obviously change the roughness. So full control over the texture, uh, making it very easy to work with in any scene and to generate a infinite amount of different tileable textures. All right, so that's the end of the video again. And uh, as I said, we get a texture with full control. I just animated it in this video uh, to show you, you get all of these controls uh, inside of the shader. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like, subscribe or comment down below. And I want to point out that the project files for this video are available on my Gumroad for just $2. So thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.